and I'm delighted that myself and my wife, Alice, have been asked here today uh, to travel on the first train to Atenroy, because it's a symbolic journey for me, because 21 years ago, I made the journey from Atenroy to Galway. And I, even though I got on very well in Galway since I came here, I, I got on very well in Atenroy when I lived here 21 years ago for uh, 10 or 12 years as well. So I'm delighted to be making a certain journey to Atenroy, and I'm expecting a big turnout now to welcome me back after 31 years. <laughs> I see some of the Atenroy people came in, so I was able to welcome them to Galway, and uh, I'll be travelling then. I won't delay because there are many more important, more important speakers than I here today. I'm delighted that uh, Eilish and myself have been invited to travel on the train, and thank. Uh, West Rail Steam Train Company for inviting us and for the wonderful work they have done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barry. I will now call on T.P. O'Neill, President of West Rail, to say a few words. Mr. Mayor, Minister, and friends, the party in it is so easy for law stock of its own way. In the stock of men on land, you know, to see steam back here is wonderful because it has the smell of nostalgia. It's something in it for all of us who can remember the various trains we've traveled on over the years, many, many years ago, and it's wonderful to see it back. And here we have beside us something which is, I think, a, a mobile heritage center.
very much, David. I would now call on our own minister to the department has played a very important role. been of great assistance to us, and who, I have no doubt, we will be calling on her again to perform her usual miracle. We introduce you, Maura Gagan, when you Of the rail between 
Dublin and Galway, nor indeed would I tolerate any such proposal. So it's up to me now, on behalf of Ian Roderan and with the support of Ian Roderan, to look for as much money as we can get through the Cohesion Fund and the European Regional Development Fund for expenditure and investment in the mainline rail up and down the country. We've done investment in Dublin Belfast, we've done commuter investment between Dublin and Clondalkin South West Rail Corridor to there, and now we need to ensure that the mainline rail becomes the next priority. That's my priority and I know that it's the priority of everybody living in the West of Ireland. So we know it's that Thank you very much, Minister. I promise you, we've only two minutes more, and then we'll be all aboard. But it would be wrong for me not to mention Bob McGurk. Tony Claffey, who has been there in the background, Madeleine Brody, John Cook, as I mentioned Frank Dawson before, Michael O'Neill, who juggles the figures and always comes up with the right answer. And I would like to thank everybody who has helped us. And I would say one thing else. West Rail is now an actual employer. We have two full-time employees, and we hope to expand that further. We look forward to a successful season. We think we're going to do a lot of good for Bowman and for Ackerman and for Sloan. And I thank you all for your support for being here today. And I hope you have a very successful and enjoyable trip with us. And then we'll see you again. Thank you very much for being here.
I'd like three years. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> and you stick. <laughs> We're never on time. Um, so it's only fitting that they should be about ten minutes late already. You never know what happened at the other end. Could I say something, though, that is important? Anybody who has seen the trains in England, you see a chap going up and down as they come in saying, mind the gap, please. It's about 15 inches wide on the edge of the platform. Make sure you, if you can at all, keep back about that 15 to 18 inches, especially small people. And the other thing, you do know there's about, about 120 people on the train. Now, I don't know where they're going to fit when they come in here. Could we possibly get the crowds at either end back a little bit? I mean, I know that's a lot to ask, but if the whole crowd at that side and that side could retreat about two to three yards, it would make things possible for the civil defence here. Do you think that's possible? Would that
They recognized that there was a great potential in restoring a steam train to run around this area of County Galway. And with precious little resources and little bit enthusiasm and goodwill, they set about forming the West Rail Company. Today is the conclusion of a very successful chapter. I won't say the final chapter because these are there are many more success stories to come. But what has been done has been well done. On your behalf and on behalf of Afton Rye, could I pay a very sincere tribute to the President of West Rail, Professor Tom O'Neill. Of West Rail, most of whom are here. I will mention one or two. Two people, I think, that certainly deserve recognition because both are wearing what you might call, metaphorically speaking, two hats. The chairperson of West Rail and his assistant both not only have given great, great service indeed to their vision of West Rail, but they have also gone um, way beyond the call of duty. They are, in fact, the county development officer and his assistant. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Charles Lynch and Mr. Frank Dawson. A large array of county dignitaries here. There's a most magnificent selection of chains of office right behind me. I do apologize to all those who can't see them, but one man certainly I think you will recognize the present chairman of the present mayor of Galway. Would you please re welcome Mr. Paul McCormack? Two other people whom I do recognize in change of office, Mr. Michael Mullins, Chairman of the Galway County Council. Would you please welcome him? <laughs> and Mr. Bernie O'Hara, Chamber of the Galway Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> now, this success story could not have been achieved without the collaboration of a great number of people. And there is one particular group I particularly want to applaud because by their foresight, by their collaboration, and indeed by their total commitment to supporting what was essentially a private venture and collaborating with a large number of other state bodies and semi-state bodies, they made this possible, not only in their financial contributions, but in their very significant weaving of red tape and allowing for deregulations to allow this to happen. Would you please welcome the Managing Director of Irish Rail, Mr. David Waters, please. There's so many people around here, I know I'm going to forget an awful lot of people whom I should remember. Listen, I'm not going to try very much further. I do want to underline the significance of today, because essentially today is about expanding the tourism product of what is on offer in this area of Galway, and indeed in this area of Connacht. We're all aware that jobs are hard to come by. We're all aware that there is a concerted push on to ensure that there is a viable product here so that we can have a viable service industry in this area. In order to achieve that, our leading sector is tourism, and it behoves all of us to ensure that the product is as varied and as variable as possible to ensure the largest possible sector of the market in this area. Now, I'm very proud that Athenry is very much part and parcel of this, Obviously, it's been waiting for many centuries, I might say, for its light to shine. It has a great deal to offer, but it can only be offered because semi-state bodies, state bodies, the local authorities are in full co co collaboration with a vibrant local community. And I'm fairly unashamedly going to name some of the local community that have given very, very significant leadership in this community and the initiative of this community over the last 20 months since their inception. In fact, strange as it may seem, not to some of you, they're all ladies. The ladies committee, and I'm going to name all six of them by name because they certainly deserve our public recognition and our public support. And they are, in fact, Peggy Walsh, Mary McGovern, Maureen Lawless, Carmel Parker, Adrian Wren, and to Madeline Brody. Would you give them a round of applause? Please? 
for the century development for our tourist potential is about total collaboration, the in phrase is bottom up. And that means that local community must be able to present what they have on offer and to make it viable and to be there to work hard to ensure that we get our share of the cake. These ladies have done that. I've mentioned Madeleine under two guises. Again, figuratively, although she's not wearing any hat at all, she's wearing two because, in fact, she's also a very hard-working director of West Rail. <laughs> Among our guests, and I speak of them collectively, there is a link with the past because on that train, as the passengers dismounted, were some 47 members of the Birmingham clan who have chosen to join us on this occasion. With them is the 22nd holder of the Baron de Birmingham, the 20, 20th successor of the founder of this time, this town, Myler de Birmingham, the second Baron of Athenry. Would you welcome, please, the Birmingham clan and their Baron, Baron John de Birmingham. initiative of the community under the leadership and the inspiration of a ladies group. Now, sorry, just before I go on to that, there is another very tenuous connection here because one person who is here I know who has a Birmingham connection and I will get on to his further connection later on. Brian Birmingham is here. He is the uh, private secretary of Mr. Noel Tracy, the Minister for State. Would you welcome Brian, please? I do want to mention some other body to whom this town is greatly indebted. He is a very, very good friend of this town. He's an extremely hard-working man. He has made every effort to be here, but unfortunately, due to a funeral commitment, he cannot be here. He may indeed be on the fringes of a crowd by now because he was rushing to get back. But he certainly has done sterling work in his ministry for this town and for this area to enhance the tourist product. I am referring, of course, to the work of the Office of Public Works, and I refer especially to Mr. Noel Tracy, Minister of State. Would you please show your appreciation for him? <laughs> Finally, I referred earlier to the initiative and the vision shown by a group of ladies in promoting this town and in getting together the type of community spirit you see generated on this platform today. In another area, we are very, very lucky indeed to have that female vision, initiative and foresight directing and steering our total tourist initiative in the country at this stage. Since this is a tourist area, we are very, very proud indeed to have as the Minister for Transport and Tourism a very, very capable lady from this region. For our first time to Athenry, would you please show a very sincere <laughs> Athenry welcome But of course, she is, she is, Madeline says since I've been here, she's been here many times since I've been here, but she's coming today in a very official capacity. She's not just as our local TD, she is coming as our Minister for Transport and Power. We're very proud of her and her initiative, and we really want to welcome her into our appreciation. Thank you, Father. No, I'm going to ask Maura to address you in a few moments, but we do in a more figurative way, wants to show our appreciation for her presence with us today. There are two young ladies out here in the front of the platform that have been standing here for a long, long time because I have to explain to these people that I do remember when the steam train was our regular transport and it was never on time. But these young ladies have been standing here for a long time. So if the Minister would like to come forward to receive just tokens of our appreciation. Ms. Annabelle is presenting the Minister with flowers. Amy is presenting her with a beautiful line drawing of N90, lest she ever forget this day. And a lot of great festival in Athen Rye, but of course the Porrick Pat Bottom Festival, either a famous son of Athen Rye, and Leone presents the minister with an anthology collect of collective poems of Mr. Porrick Fallon. Now, would you welcome please to address you the Minister for Transport and Tourism, Mrs. Morgan Quinn, TD. I have 
hope for the sake of all of us politicians here today that Father O'Malley sticks with the club and doesn't decide to enter politics. <laughs> Congratulations to, as Father O'Malley said, to the West Rail people, particularly to Charles Lynch and to Frank Dawson, who spearheaded...